Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the long-awaited Transcraft TZ-02 Beetle, also known as a third-party masterpiece representation of Bumblebee as he appeared in of course the Bumblebee solo movie. Now if you are in the market for picking this figure up he is available to pre-order right now over at the Icon store and for that of course I will leave a link down in the description box below and be sure to use discount code Prime vs Prime for a discount off of your total order. This particular release here by Transcraft has got to be one of of, if not the most anticipated third party release for me as I had my socks blown off when I took a look at their first movie verse release that being Mohawk based on of course Transformers 5 and personally for me I've never really believed that we have gotten a definitive representation of Bumblebee from the solo movie that can indeed transform that is of course until this particular release here by Transcraft taking a look here at the packaging you can see that it is very stylistic as far as box art is concerned we have a side profile image here of Bumblebee with of course the iconic song that we hear Bumblebee banging out towards the end of the solo movie. Don't worry, Bumblebee, I'm pretty certain no collector who picks this figure up will forget about you anytime soon. Here at the top, we have the Transcraft logo. Here at the bottom, we have Beetle. The side of the box has an image of the Volkswagen bug. And then as we spin around here to the back of the box, we have once again a front view image of Bumblebee. So without further ado, let's crack this open and see what awaits us inside. And so here we have Beetle opened up and out of his packaging. And of course, as he comes packaged here in his robot mode. Now, upon opening this figure out of the box for the first time, I was absolutely blown away with how close Transcraft had actually gotten to capturing Bumblebee's appearance from, of course, the solo movie. This is by far the best transformable representation of the character seen from the latest live action movie, and I love how it looks. Taking a look here at the details, you can see that as far as the sculpt work for the head is concerned, this looks incredible. Not only is the sculpt incredibly impressive, but we also have an amazing variety of paintwork, which really does help to capture Bumblebee's appearance from his solo debut. You can see that as far as the face plate is concerned this here has got a metallic wash with a slightly darker wash applied over the top in order to bring out not only the sharper details of the sculpt but also to evoke the sense of this character being slightly weathered much like he was in the movie you can also see some fantastic sculpt work around where the eyes and even the eyebrows are concerned and of course we do have bumblebee's mouth plate there which has been sculpted and detailed impeccably well taking a look here towards the sides of bumblebee's helmet these sections too have also been sculpted amazing and let's not forget to mention that the shade of yellow that they have indeed painted the figure in once again is incredibly accurate to the movie. As we take a look here from a top perspective, you can see some minute details that perhaps you wouldn't have even noticed in the film. We of course have Bumblebee's ears here, which are indeed on ball joints, which I'll demonstrate later on in the review. All of the silver paintwork, which picks out some of the sharper details of the sculpt, has been implied incredibly precisely, and there are no paint bleeds on this figure to my knowledge. As we spin around here to the back, the back is just as detailed as the front, although this time being unpainted, it still has been cast out of a gunmetal grey, which certainly doesn't detract from the overall sculpt. As we spin around here to the front of Bumblebee, the chest unit, in my opinion, looks fantastic and is almost a rival for Free Zero, which have put out two figures of which do not transform, whereas this figure here does actually convert. You can see that as far as the weathering is concerned here to the chest plate, this, in my opinion, looks fantastic. The sculpt work for the front headlights, as well as the addition of transparent plastic, really helps to give this character here a sense of realism, and I'm pretty certain you will all be surprised to know that this is indeed a faux chest. These here do not become the front headlights of the Volkswagen Bug, which was something that I was not expecting upon transforming this figure. As we take a look here towards where the armpit is, you can see that this too has also been sculpted and painted incredibly well. The shoulders there have got a very elegant design and overall I believe the Bumblebee movie Bumblebee design is one of the best from the live action movies so far. You can also see that the paintwork for the forearm guard there too has come out incredibly well and with the addition of some fantastic sculpt work, it certainly is a sight to behold. As we take a look here towards the inner section of the arm, you can also see how we have got a metallic silver used here with some very authentic weathering paint apps applied over the top. The only time I have seen paint work this well done is of course on the officially licensed Free Zero and Free A products and of course on the third party Devil Saviour products. Personally I always believed that Devil Saviour did have the best paint apps as far as third party was concerned but handling Beetle here by Transcraft they could definitely rival that. As we take a look here towards the midsection of the torso you can see some super nice details such as some mechanical components. We also have got some tubes and you can also pick out some minute details where Bumblebee's can set tape would indeed actually be in the movie. As we take a look here down to the legs, I love the circular nature here to the fire armor. Of course, we do have the indication lights on the top of these, which is very authentic to the movie. And I love the paintwork here. You can also see that the fires have been completely covered in a very similar metallic gray to what we got here on the forearms. And overall, personally, I'm not sure about yourselves, but you would not expect this figure to transform. As we take a look here towards the legs, I do have some minor complaints with these. However, that is mainly in regards to articulation, so I shan't be discussing them here for 
the detail segment, but as far as detail and skull work is concerned, considering how complex the conversion is, I believe they have done a fantastic job. The proportions are pretty much spot on to what we saw in the movie, as so as the minute details that they have added, such as the pistons. We also have this section here at the top, and as we take a look here towards the inner section of the leg, they have not skimped out whatsoever. We have some fantastic mechanical components, and then as we take a look here towards the front of the figure, the shin guards too have also been painted incredibly well, and these are indeed made out of a plastic material, as so is the majority of this figure. The foot design here has also come out very, very nicely. As we spin around here to the back, this figure has no back kibble whatsoever, which was something that the official Takara Tomi movie masterpiece figure was not able to replicate. As we take a look here, the placement of the wheels too is very authentic to the movie. We of course have the much smaller, more compressed door wings than as opposed to the door wings that we did get on the official MP version. They have gone the extra mile to actually sculpt and paint the spine of Bumblebee, which is of course in order to aid movie accuracy. And then as we take a look here towards the back of the figure, the back of the legs too has been sculpted and detailed really nicely. And all of these panels do indeed flip around for alternate mode. And in my opinion, this figure here is just a sign of what is to come from Transcraft. As we take a look here towards the back of the legs, we do have some die cast material here. This is mainly in order to reinforce some of the joints when you are transforming him. And I love that they did include that. As we take a look here towards the back of Bumblebee's feet, I also like how they have included details such as the tail lights. And we also have got a really nice metallic silver applied here to the back. As far as Bumblebee's articulation is concerned, he is incredibly well articulated. So here for the head, we do have a ball joint. This can look up that far as well as down. It can also tilt side to side and of course rotate left to right. We also do have a neck hinge, which does allow you to amplify the range of motion out of that. So you can see you can get him looking all the way up and then of course all the way down. The ears here are on ball joints, so you can compress them and move them around to your so desire. The chest pieces here too are on ball joints, so you can manipulate these around depending on how you wish to pose the arms as we do indeed get butterfly joints with these which can hinge forwards and backwards we do get a full 360 here at the shoulder the shoulder pads are indeed on ball joints so these can hinge out the way in order to accommodate some of the poses that you may wish to get out of the lower bicep so this can rotate the full 360 we do get a single hinge joint here at the elbow but the way they have designed it if you do rotate the arm this way you will indeed get well past 90 degrees out of that which in my opinion is fantastic we can also rotate the lower section here of the arm and i love how they've added these tiny little prongs that we also saw in the movie. We do have a ball joint as well as a hinge joint here for the hand, so this can hinge back and forth as well as, of course, rotate the full 360. The fingers are slightly limited in my opinion. These three are indeed joined, and I maybe would have liked to have seen the index finger individually articulated, but as far as this is concerned, we do get a hinge joint here for the middle as well as here at the knuckles, and the thumb is on a ball joint as well as a hinge joint. We do get a full 360 rotation here at the waist. The legs are able to kick forwards that far, which is to a fantastic degree. They can also kick backwards that far he can do the splits although due to the armor this range of motion is slightly compromised i also am a huge fan of the engineering here to the knee joints there is indeed a working piston so just to demonstrate that as you bend the knee you can see how the knee pad will indeed move in accordance with this joint and i love that engineering we can of course hinge this here forwards and backwards and we get roughly 90 degrees out of this as far as the foot articulation is concerned this here can pivot forwards and backwards if i had any critiques with this it's that due to how much vehicle mode kibble does actually end up in the leg it can make things rather clunky and you will have to hinge certain elements out of the way in order to accommodate certain poses but overall as far as articulation detail and paintwork is concerned i am pretty much blown away by this particular release here by transcraft i believe they have created the best live action bumblebee movie bumblebee to date here for a masterpiece Bumblebee size comparison, we have the Transcraft version compared next to two official Takara Tomi releases, one of which is actually the Bumblebee movie version, and I have got to say, and I'm pretty sure many of you will agree with me in saying that the Transcraft version absolutely obliterates the Takara Tomi and Hasbro release. Now, I'm pretty certain that this figure here was based on early concept art. However, if you do plan to design a masterpiece figure, you are going to want to ensure that it is as accurate as it can be. So personally, I wish Takara Tomi could have held out until the movie did indeed hit the silver screen. To me, it seems as if they rushed this and it definitely did backfire. Not only is the Transcraft version superior as far as sculpt and accuracy to the movie is concerned, but I also believe the paintwork as well as the articulation once again absolutely annihilates what we get here with the Takara Tomi release. As we spin around here to the back, of course, the Takara Tomi version does have the door wings, which we didn't get in the movie, but that is not the only downside to this figure. He has the bonnet, the windscreen, as well as the top of the car stored here on his backpack, where there is no kibble on this figure, which is isn't accurate to the movie. Overall, I believe that it is pretty easy to see who is the winner as far as which character is better. And even comparing this figure here paint-wise to the actual Takara Tomi 07 movie Bumblebee, I 
still do believe that Transcraft release is the best one out of them all. Here for a Bumblebee Movie Optimus Prime comparison, we have Transcraft B compared next to the Free Zero DLX Optimus, as well as of course the Toy World version of Optimus Prime. And as far as the scaling between both of these figures is concerned, I believe he scales really well. Of course, in the B Movie, Bumblebee was significantly shorter than Optimus Prime, and I definitely do get that impression here with these particular figures. So if you are looking for a Bumblebee to scale with the Toy World Optimus or even the Free Zero version, once again, I believe the Transcraft version is the best way to go. And here for one final comparison, we have the Transcraft Beetle compared next to the Free Zero DLX Bumblebee. Now, of course, as the Free Zero version is officially licensed by Hasbro, the Transcraft version has a slight unfair advantage as it can transform, although I mainly brought the Free Zero version in just to compare how accurate the Transcraft version truly is. You can see that I believe they've done an exceptional job. Now, of course, I do have the larger door wings here on the Free Zero version, which in the movie he did have the door wings which look like this. So I shan't be discussing those, but as far as the head sculpt, the overall proportions are concerned, I believe they've done such a fantastic job. We also have the wheels in the correct placement, which I think is awesome. The spine section there on the back, everything just looks very, very authentic and of course accurate to the movie. Even down to the subtle details there of the sculpt work, I just believe it is such a well done piece. I have heard some people complain that the arms on the Transcraft version do appear to be slightly too long, although if you do extend the version by Free Zero, you can also see that they actually come a little past where the knees are, where the Transcraft version comes just to where the knee is. So as far as the proportions are concerned, I believe this version here is pretty much spot on to the movie. And the paintwork too, whilst not as good as Free Zero, it is still very impressive and in my opinion destroys anything put out by Hasbro and Takara Tomy. Taking a look at the accessories that come included with the Beetle, my personal favourite as always has got to be Bumblebee's Battle Mask. Much like the head that already comes pre-installed on Bumblebee, I believe Transcraft have done a really nice job in capturing the design from the movie. As far as the sculpt and paintwork is concerned, it is pretty much spot on. And once again, I love the weathering effect that they have applied to this. If I had any critiques in regards to sculpt, it's that they have been unable to replicate the almost honeycomb effect that Bumblebee does have in his visor, although that is a minor nitpick for what is otherwise a great looking accessory. Of course, the ears here at the top are on ball joints, much like the other head, so you can manipulate those as well as compress them. And if you do opt to keep this head on when you do actually transform the figure, it is recommended that you take this section here lift this up bring the front faceplate forward and then collapse that in and then collapse that over the top and then of course compress these sections so that you don't cause any damage to the paint and so that the transformation is pretty much the same when you have the regular head installed. As far as swapping the heads out is concerned it is simply just a matter of taking this head and popping it off here on the ball joint due to the plastic peg being incredibly thick and for the most part the materials on this figure feeling very high grade I don't have much of a concern of this snapping over time although of course it will depend on how much force you do apply and what angle you do apply that force onto but nevertheless taking the battle mask head here and popping this on bumblebee's head it is a very tight fit so it will take quite a considerable amount of force you can see there that the battle mask does implement rather seamlessly and as far as sculpt and detail is concerned it looks just as good as the regular face of course we do get two different battle blades one of which is very accurate to how it appeared in the movie whereas this one i believe is based more on the concept art this one looks a little more like a chainsaw as far as actually installing these into the arms is concerned you just want to take the ball peg hinge this here slightly and these grooves will slide under the forearm which i think is a really nice seamless way of actually incorporating the accessory on and this too also looks very nice and then we can take this one if you wanted and have him almost dual wield these blades which is good for display options and for collectors who want Bumblebee slightly more hands-on than of course having his blaster of course he does come with his blaster so just removing this here the paint and the sculpt work much like the rest of the figure has been applied exceptionally well I really do like the metallic section that we have here it certainly does look as if it has been made out of a die cast material when in reality it has indeed just been cast out of this yellow plastic as far as incorporating this here onto the arm this has got to be one of the best incorporations of a bumblebee blaster that i have seen to date you basically just want to hinge the thumb and fingers out we do get a tab that will peg onto a port here so just snap that section in and there is also another tab that will peg into the palm of the hand so clip that in there fold the thumb over and <laughs> Here we have Bumblebee's Stinger Blaster, and I think that looks wicked. Of course, in the movie, Bumblebee's hand did actually wrap around the blaster, and I believe, considering this to be an additional accessory, they have once again done a fantastic job. I also love the colour match between this silver and, of course, the silver that we get on the forearm, and overall, I love how this looks. So, as far as accessories are concerned, once again, another really well done job by the team over at Transcraft. And so, turning to transformation, to begin with, you're going to want to take the ears here and just collapse those sections down. We can then take the fists 
hinge out all of the fingers just like so and you're going to want to ensure that they are aligned to something that looks along the lines of this of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side so extend all of the fingers out hinge the ball joint back and then utilize the hinge joint and push this section forward so that the palm is resting at the base of the forearm we can then wrap the fingers over there as well and collapse the thumb you're then going to want to take the forearm joint rotate this around so that the tab is facing outwards and so that this tab is facing forwards of course repeat the same process here on the opposite side so hinge that section out lift the shoulder pad up rotate this around so that we have the screw that is visible then collapse that down repeat the same process here on the opposite side like that what you'll then want to do is take the wheels just hinge these sections out and you're going to want to take your finger and disengage this chest piece which will allow you to lift this entire assembly here up just like this what i then recommend you do is take the bumper section and this is actually a die cast piece so you're going to want to fold out that side and of course fold out this side we can then proceed to extend all of this up to the top you'll then want to take the wheels hinge these sections here all the way around so that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this repeat the same process and here with this you can see that we have two slots here and here that these joints will indeed store so just bring this up and over until that clips into place and of course repeat the same process we can then align these up here appropriately ensure that everything looks something along the lines of this take the forearm rotate it once more repeat the same process and tab these two sections here together really securely you're going to want to ensure that there is pretty much no space between that tab as the tolerances despite them being good on this figure if you do have something slightly misaligned it could potentially cause for some issues later during the transformation what i then recommend you do is take the wheels hinge these sections like so and on the back of the wheels there is indeed tabs that will peg into the slots that we see here on the chest plate now these will more than likely become detached throughout the duration of the transformation however i would recommend tabbing them in now just so that it does keep the chest plate in one piece when we are transforming him you'll then want to take the head here hinge this section back take the torso rotate this entire assembly all the way around so that it is completely reversed we can then turn our attention here to this section and you can see how we do have a pin joint that goes into this groove you're essentially just going to want to extend this here all the way up what I then recommend you do is take the torso rotate this section around so that these sections are now facing the back we can then turn our attention to this section you're going to want to bring this here around and of course repeat the same process what I would then recommend doing is taking these here rotating these sections around like so and repeat the exact same process here on this side you'll then want to ensure that the head is pulled forward so that it does tuck into this cavity as we are now going to essentially flip all of this around and honestly the engineering on this piece in my opinion is mind-blowing what you'll then want to do is turn your attention to this piece and this entire assembly will disengage like so and then you can bring the legs down take these panels and fold them out so that we are left with something that looks along the lines of this now you're going to want to take this assembly bring this all the way in and with these elbow joints you're going to want to ensure that these here are bent like so as everything will tuck into place up in here so that we are left with something that looks roughly along the lines of this you'll then want to take the bumper of course we have a tab that will peg into this slot and then these two sections will slide into the grooves on either side of the rear so just bring this up overlap that over the top ensure that that there is clipped securely there into place you shall then want to turn your attention here to the legs and i would recommend taking this back section unlocking this taking this piece folding this section in and then at the base of the foot there's a part of the vehicle mode that you will want to detach once that's done it should allow you to bring this entire section here all the way up and this is certainly where things can become slightly convoluted you want to take both sections of the leg and essentially just pry them apart until they do split open this here is tabbed into place so just lift this section up which then should allow you to essentially just completely split that there like so what i would then recommend doing is taking this hinge joint ensuring that it is raised we can then take the leg rotate this section here around so that we have something that looks along the lines of this we can then take this panel hinge this section up rotate this here around and then with this piece you're going to want to compress the knee joint fold this section here up rotate this around and leave it pegged there like so you'll then just want to align that up so we have something that looks along the lines of this you'll then want to open both parts of this up and then if i just flip here to this side 
fold this section out, bring this assembly here down, and then of course we can extend all of this until we create the top part of the vehicle mode. So just hinge this down all the way like so. What I would then recommend you do is turn your attention to the interior, ensure that the foot is indeed in an alignment with this circular section. We can then take the wheel, bring this here all the way around, and then with this top section, it is on a ball joint, which you'll just want to spin until this silver piece is at the top of the windscreen. Once that's done, there is a port that will peg into this tab. So just align this up here. And of course, snap that in there securely, realign the front bumper, come here to this side, bring this out and fold this section out as well. I would recommend leaving it like this for now as we have to repeat the same steps here on the opposite side before we can begin any further steps. So just disengage this section, fold this here down, take this panel, extend that there, which will then allow you to bring this entire assembly forward. Turn your attention here to the leg, fold up this pad, take these sections and split them all the way out. Of course, come here to this section, rotate this around, hinge this section, take this piece up, rotate that up as well. We can then bring this section down, pull this ball joint up, fillet all of that open, just like so. And then really it is just a matter of folding this piece here out, bringing this out. The transformation is rather straightforward once you do get the hang of it. It's just more of aligning pieces up appropriately than anything. And of course, going in a certain way as you don't want to begin jumping steps and then have to backtrack later on. We can then bring this here up, which unfortunately these sections do pop off every so often, but they easily enough are able to be reattached. We can then rotate this here all the way around. Take that same tab and port that we used earlier on on the opposite side and just tab that into place. Bring this up, take the wheel, bring this down. Now something which is slightly different for this side when compared to the opposite side is you're going to want to take the top of the foot here and actually compress this here just like so. You will want to ensure that you do this as you will not be able to combine the two halves later on during the transformation. Then we can take this section, fold out the rear light, and now we can begin really bringing this vehicle mode here together. Now you can see that on the back of the fires we do have some slots that will peg into some tabs here. So just align this up appropriately, bring the windows out of the way, and snap that in there securely. Turn your attention here to this side. And of course, repeat the exact same process. So just snap all of that in there like so. We can then take this section, extend that out. And of course, repeat the exact same process here on this side. I would ensure that these are risen all the way up as they can become obstructive when you do begin to pull the door panels in. Now for this, we do have a slot that will peg here into this tab. So bring this entire region here up and over, ensure that this piece does shoot through as well. Bring this here up too. Bring that up and over. And of course, repeat the same process here on the opposite side. So just bring these two halves together. And this section will indeed fit into the interior of this foot. So just snap all of this here. And then as we turn our attention to this section, you can see how we do have grooves and slots as well as a locking mechanism here. So I would recommend tapping them into place and then of course, locking all of that there securely into place. And this here will hopefully just fold all the way in just like that. We can of course realign the bumper so that this tab sits underneath. And then we turn our attention here to the tabs and slots that I mentioned earlier on. Now these are certainly a pain to actually tab in, but you're basically just going to want to snap that side in. And then of course, repeat the same process here for this side. So you can see that tab that will peg there into that slot. Just align this up appropriately, clip that there. And then now what we can proceed to do is bring these panels down. We do have a slot there that this tab will peg into. Snap that into place, come here to this side. Repeat the same process, just ensure that all of this is aligned up appropriately. I would then recommend taking the tail light here. This is on a ball joint, which does allow you to hinge it out to the side slightly so that you don't obstruct this section. Although when transforming this back into robot mode, it is near enough impossible to disengage this locking mechanism from this section without popping this entire piece off. And as this is made out of clear plastic, I'm pretty certain that over time this could potentially break. So perhaps sanding this section here down or just taking extreme caution would be advised for this particular segment of the transformation, especially as mentioned when going in reverse but then just collapse this here 
we do have a slot that will peg there into this tab so just keep your eye on that and then these tabs will have to slide underneath this section but as mentioned take the tail light here and basically overlap that and that will clip into place we can then take this snap all of this here securely come here to this side and repeat the exact same process so just take the tail light overlap that snap that into place repeat the exact same process tap that there into place ensure that all of this does stay locked in as well and then the final steps are of course to just take this ensure that this tab does fit behind this window so just snap that under there and of course repeat the same process here for this side if the wheels have come detached of course just realign those and tap those into place but with the transformation now complete here we have transcraft bumblebee fully transformed up into what is a pretty decent looking Volkswagen beetle now as you could probably tell from that transformation segment transcraft beetle is by no stretch of the imagination an easy ride and it did take me quite a considerable attempt to actually memorize the transformation steps off by heart but as the robot mode looks as good as it does I'm easy easily able to overcome what can be at some times a cumbersome transformation and for the most part I believe his VW bug alt mode here looks really well done now of course there are some gaps although that could just be the tolerances on my particular copy for the most part I believe this here does do a good job now of course the robot mode looked incredibly accurate and unfortunately out of the two modes the Volkswagen Beetle here is probably the weakest due to it having so many different panel lines although I've always said in any review I have done of a Transformers product is that if there was one mode that had to be compromised in order to result in a better mode it would always be the vehicle mode as I believe the robot mode is definitely top priority and to be honest there really isn't much to complain about here as far as the overall proportions of the VW bug is concerned I believe they've done a pretty decent job another minor critique that I do have is that despite in robot mode him having an incredibly weathered appearance here in his alternate mode he does look rather clean now of course there are some darker areas although I would have much rather had this entire assembly here been completely decked out in a very similar weathering that we got in robot mode as a course in the movie Bumblebee's VW bug was very dilapidated and unfortunately that's not really the impression that I am getting here from this vehicle although taking a look here at the details you can see that as far as the front is concerned I do like the front bumper of course we've got the headlights which are indeed a separate pair of headlights compared to the ones that we actually get here for the chest so some fantastic engineering there in my opinion we also do get the window wipers which have been painted and sculpted on as well as this very dark transparent plastic I love how this looks as it really does help to aid the look here of the vehicle mode whilst at the same time conceals all of the robot mode kibble that would be apparent if this was indeed clear transparent plastic we of course have the singular side view mirror and this too has also been painted rather nicely we have the indication lights some nice silver here to the top bonnet as we take a look here towards the wheels i really do like the weathering effect here and it's a shame we don't get that for the rest of the vehicle but nevertheless these have come out rather nicely and the tires from what i can tell are indeed made out of rubber as we flip around here to the back you can see that i haven't been able to perfectly snap all of these panels into place but you can see that we do have some nice tail lights this section here is made out of a die cast material which I believe looks fantastic it would definitely have been nice if this section too could have been die cast much like the bumper but nevertheless it still does look quite well and overall as an entire piece I am thoroughly impressed with this I for sure believe this to be one of the best third party figures that I have in my collection so despite some discrepancies that I may have with the vehicle mode overall I believe it's still a fantastic looking piece now if you do transform him 100% correctly he will be able to roll along the ground with ease which is fantastic and as the wheels here are made out of rubber he will pretty much be able to glide along any surface here for a masterpiece bumblebee size comparison of course we have the 07 movie bumblebee and as far as the scaling is concerned i don't believe this here looks all that bad at all taking a look here at the paint job despite me having some discrepancies in regards to the weathering i still do believe that the paint deco that we have here for the transcraft version is superior when compared to the color scheme that we got here on the official takara tomi product so you can see that the beat is definitely a lot shorter than the Camaro as it really should be but it is slightly taller which I'm not entirely sure is accurate to a real life representation so perhaps this vehicle here is a little out of scale but for the most part I believe that it works rather nicely and so some final thoughts as you could all probably tell I am thoroughly impressed by Transcraft's latest offering here with Bumblebee he is by far one of the best live action movie third party figures on the market his robot mode is near enough pixel accurate to what we saw in the film the paintwork is phenomenal 
And honestly, if you actually compare this figure in robot mode to the likes of the Free Zero version, you would not believe that this figure here could transform. He also has a great range of articulation, some of the best I have seen for a transformable product. He also comes with a great array of accessories, such as, of course, his battle mask, two blades, and his stinger blaster. We also do get some die cast into this figure, and whilst on the topic of the material, everything does feel of a very high grade, even the transparent plastic. So I definitely don't believe that this figure will break anytime soon. Of course, it is recommended that you take your time and handle this figure with care, but I certainly put this figure through the grinder when I was transforming him in preparation for this review and found that none of the pieces did indeed break. The transformation is, of course, on the more complex side. However, you are never going to get a robot mode which looks as good as this without having a complex conversion, and once you do get the hang of it, it does certainly become rather straightforward. His alternate mode is certainly the weaker out of the two modes. However, as mentioned, I've always said that if there was one mode to be compromised, it would always be the vehicle mode if it meant that it maximized the look of the robot mode. But that's definitely not to say that the VW bug here is bad. I personally really like it. There are, of course, a few ugly areas, such as where all the panels do connect, but for the most part, it definitely does resemble what we saw in the movie. I also would have perhaps liked to have seen a slightly more dilapidated color scheme applied to this figure here for his alt mode, especially as in the movie, the vehicle used was incredibly weathered and battered, and you really don't get the sense of that here with this particular figure. But overall, I am thoroughly impressed and would recommend this here to any movie masterpiece collector or third party enthusiast in general. I really hope that you enjoyed this review. If you are in the market for picking Transcraft Beetle up, he is available to pre-order right now over at the Icon store. And once again, for that, of course, I will leave a link down in the description box below. And be sure to use discount code Prime versus Prime for, of course, a discount off of your order. I really hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, please do let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this figure and whether or not you intend to add him to your collection. I thank you all for watching. And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.